Have you ever been told you had an endometrial polyp and didn't know what to do? Well, today we'll talk about endometrial polyps and how they cause abnormal bleeding and how they're treated. If that sounds good to you, continue watching. Well, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Nefertiti Dupont and I'm a board certified gynecologic oncologist. And today I'm gonna to talk about endometrial polyps. Now in a prior video, I spoke about the Palm Cohen system. It's a classification system and how we think about um, the causes of abnormal bleeding. Um, and I'll kind of briefly go over that again. So it's palm, like the palm of your hand, and coin, like almost like a coin. The P in palm is for polyps, and that's one of the most common causes of abnormal bleeding in kind of the perimenopausal slash menopausal age group of the women that I see. So in terms of what a polyp is, um, I have this little nifty uterus here. So a polyp really is just a little kind of fleshy, I don't know how to explain it, little tissue there, that kind of little on the inside there, that polyp. So it's a little fleshy tissue, looks like a little grape or small piece of tissue. It can cause abnormal bleeding. Most of the time I find that it is benign, but it does need to be removed just to make sure there's no precancer cells or cancer cells in it. You can have an endometrial cancer contained in a polyp. You can also have endometrial hyperplasia or precancer condition that's contained in a polyp. So how do we find polyps? So typically when someone comes to the office and they're concerned about their bleeding, whether it's irregular or abnormal, such as postmenopausal bleeding, or a woman whose cycle has stopped but now has bleeding again, that's called postmenopausal bleeding. Well, typically your healthcare provider will first get a history and kind of ask you about your bleeding pattern, some of your symptoms. Are you fatigued? Are you um, passing clots when you bleed? How often are you bleeding? Um, and then we'll also do an ultrasound. Sometimes it's done in the, in the office, sometimes it's done in a radiology suite or hospital. What the ultrasound is looking for is are there any unusual masses on the uterus? So, you know, we, we commonly think about fibroids or cysts on the ovaries. Those are all seen on an ultrasound. Sometimes polyps are seen, but sometimes they're not. So what oftentimes um, I'll get is a report from the radiologist that says that the lining is thick. Um, they can't always see a polyp on ultrasound, especially because the density of the tissue is very similar to the lining of the endometrium. So sometimes it doesn't show up. If we know there's a polyp or I have a concern about a polyp, then sometimes we'll do something called a sonohistogram. And that's an ultrasound done with the installation of saline. So it's kind of a fancy test where saline is inserted into the cavity of the uterus and that shows polyps. It also shows masses in the uterus very well. I'll try to link a, a nice video on a sonohistogram um, for you to see. Doctors that do sonohistograms often are like infertility doctors because they're looking for polyps and um, they do it very often in the office. Um, radiologists do them. Um, some GYN doctors will do them often. Other ways we evaluate polyps are pelvic MRI. That's another test that can be seen that can show polyps, but typically um, ultrasound or sonohistogram. Another test that we also use in the office that can show polyps are uh, office hysteroscopy. And that's where we put a little camera inside the cavity of the uterus to be able to see um, what's inside. So a hysteroscopy will show, you know, an IUD that's maybe um, dislodged or it'll show a polyp or a fibroid that's inside the cavity. So these are all diagnostic tests that we use to be able to, you know, pick up polyps. Well, once we have the polyp, or at least we know that a polyp is present, you know, how do we treat it? Typically, we remove it either by a biopsy or something called a hysteroscopy with DNC. Sometimes that's the hysteroscopy can be done in the office. It can also be done in the operating room. You know, sometimes I'll have patients that have really large polyps that are too big for me to remove in the office, and those I have to remove in the hospital. And there's several different um, hysteroscopes we'll use to be able to remove those polyps in the operating room. And then once I know I have someone with a polyp um, and then I'm scheduled to have them removed, you know, I want to send that 
that tissue for pathology. Um, just because I am a cancer specialist, I want to make sure that there's no cancer in the polyp or precancer changes. Now, I do find that most of the time the polyps are benign, and if the polyp is the cause of the bleeding, a lot of times just removing the polyp will make the bleeding issues, you know, uh, resolve or go away. And so they're very easily treated. I have over the years had patients who maybe didn't want surgery for many different reasons and the polyp just went away on its own. Um, a lot of times if you're having heavy bleeding, sometimes that polyp can come out. It's not common, but I have seen it over the years happen once or twice. Typically we remove the polyp in the operating room with the hysteroscopy. And that's one of the most common ways to remove the polyps. Well, I hope that was helpful. I hope that gave you some information about endometrial polyps. I'll talk a little bit more in different videos on other causes of abnormal bleeding. Polyps are just one, but it's one of the most common ones that I see on a day-to-day -day basis. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.